Today, how do we fix crappy home Wi-Fi once and for all? I'll ask my guest today, Jason Byrne of Greenlee Communications. Join us right after this message. All right, welcome back, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Wi-Fi Now TV. My name is Klaus Hetting, and this, of course, is the show that brings you all the stories and not least all the great people from across the Wi-Fi industry. So today we're going to be talking about in-home Wi-Fi with Greenlee Communications. So here, here's the thing. To me, the holy grail, if you like, of in-home Wi-Fi is to be able to stream uh, high-def, essentially, Netflix to all your devices in any room of the house. Um, and what we're going to do today is we'll ask my guest, Jason Byrne, how to do that and he's going to come on in just a moment and we'll discuss all of the issues surrounding that now before i do that uh i want to tell you of course that the wi-fi now london event uh, that i organized with my team is over for uh, this year but if you miss it and you still want to get access to all the great information uh, from the show here's what you do you can go to our usual uh website wi-fi now dot international and you can purchase and download all the presentations and not least all the videos of the presentations. Uh, it's not free, folks. I'm sorry about that. I wish I could, but we sometimes also have to sell stuff in order to stay in business. So that's the way it is. As always, if you have any questions, please drop me a line at klaus at wifinowevents.com. Always happy to hear from you, suggestions, stories, anything you'd like to discuss in the Wi-Fi world. Delighted to hear from you. Now. My guest today is Jason Byrne from Greenlee Communications. Jason, welcome to the show. Great. Thank you, Klaus. Thanks for inviting Greenlee. Good stuff. Good to see you. And um, we saw each other a couple of weeks ago in London. You had made a great presentation. I'm really delighted that you came. Um, for those of our viewers who are not familiar with uh, Greenlee, just give us the short introduction to what you guys do. No problem, no problem, Klaus. So Greenlee Communications, we're a leading provider, or a global provider of next generation test and measurement solutions. So, you know, we address all stages of network deployment, really enabling, you know, from the installation all the way through to maintenance, obviously of wireless networks, why we're here to talk uh, about Wi-Fi, but also fiber optic cable and, and DSL networks as well. All right, very good. So let's talk a little bit about what's happening in, in, in the home with Wi-Fi, because I guess pretty much all of us I certainly have this problem. I are, are experiencing connectivity problems of one kind or the other uh, for a number of reasons around the home, right? Around the house. Yep. So uh, first of all, the question is, what do you think or what do you believe are the main problems, uh, issues causing this? That's a, that's a good question. It's a really good question, Klaus. Um, certainly from, uh, you know, we've had uh, a lot of uh, activity with a lot of the global providers, both on the MSO side, the cable operators, all the way with the telcos. And I think what the biggest feedback we're getting is that really it's the lack of attention that's paid on the installation process, mm -hmm. right? And that probably falls into a couple of categories. First one is, is really um, self-installs, right? Which is really dominant in the EMEA, especially in the, in the European and the continent, much mm -hmm. more of a self-installation practice. And that ends up leading to more trouble tickets down the road, you know, more technicians being sent out. And even with the technician-led installs, which, which North America is, is pretty you know dominant, dominantly led by technician led installs. Their current work practices are get into the house, install, show five bars, and leave, uh, and that's not cutting it either. You know, really the side effect of this lack of attention on an installation is really you know finding the right you know the attention is not being paid in the right places, such as finding the right channel or finding the best location. You know, there was one. There was one operator who uh, actually did um, cover the whole of Los city of Los Angeles, so a lot of data gathered, and they found 80% of their fixes, their Wi-Fi fixes, come from those two things, right? Reconfiguring the wireless network, the channel and the location. And I think mm -hmm. that's really what's the main, really been driving the main causes for all, obviously a lot of the Wi-Fi issues in the field. So this is really a hot topic in many ways because there's a, there's a lot of technology right now, consumer technology coming out, uh, with mesh systems and, and, and so forth, um, uh, you know, uh, and, and new technology in, in its own right. 
And also at the same time, the carriers are working very hard on solving this issue. I mean, are you seeing a lot of interest in the market for, for some way of consistently solving this problem? Yeah, that's a, that's, that's a good question, right? So certainly the carriers are blind to the, the actual user experience. I think that the carriers can get quite a lot of visibility down to the access points and the routers and the gateways. Um, mm. But it really stops there. Um, you know, just to quantify things, um, you know, this, obviously we talked about that lack of attention uh, from an installation side. Mm -hmm. you know, what we've seen is that on average, uh, and even at your show last week or two weeks ago, um, I think we saw numbers ranging from 50 to 75% of issues uh, reported to service providers, just in general, calling up my service provider. 75% of those were Wi-Fi related. So that's a massive problem, right? You're looking at hundreds of thousands of technicians and millions of customers. You know, that translates into a billion dollar problem or billion euro problem. Um, and, tremendous, and a tremendous amount of cost, obviously, for the carriers to deal with these issues. Exactly. Very exactly. high cost, obviously, to send the people. We, I, we don't have this so much, in, as you said uh, very correctly, we don't have this so much in Europe. There might be parts of it. In this part uh, of Europe, by the way, that we, we, it's all self-installed, but obviously the problem still remains, right? If you do have Yeah, a exactly. Exactly. So carriers, what we're fun to, to answer your original question, you know, what are, what are their approach or what should their approach be? Certainly mm -hmm. focus and attention should be less on the, less on the troubleshooting side, more on the installation, putting the effort, uh, whether it's a self install and getting the right tools in the customer's hands or the technicians uh, mm -hmm. to actually make sure that they do a proper installation. They do find out where the best location should be for an access point or even where the mesh uh, should be installed. You know, where are those other access points? And then what is the best channel? Um, and that's, I think, that's the, the fundamental uh, conclusions that we're finding uh, with certainly in the North American market and, and some of the European and, and actually Middle East uh, folks as well. And uh, uh, Jason, I also know that you are, uh, f for your solution, you, you do have a component of the cloud in there, right? So you are yeah. using maybe maybe you want to describe some of the parts here because I think this is this is interesting. Yeah, no, that's a good point, right? So just to, to follow on, where you know that that focus on on getting it right the first time is really where Greenly comes in, and we've we've developed this solution called the Air Scout solution, which is um, which really provides that visibility to the to the consumer as well as or the technician as well as the consumer, you know, so so that they can install it right the first time, so the customer does great get great, a great user experience. Um, and that's really the focus. So really we what we have is a distributed solution that really you put these clients or pucks around the house um, mm -hmm. in the bedrooms, in the living room, that sort of thing. And what it does then is it stresses the network to the point where you can actually see what the, you know, what the user experience is going to be like at six or seven o'clock when everybody comes home, not mm -hmm. at 10 in the morning when you're doing this test. Mm -hmm. So one, it stresses the network so you can actually see what is my Netflix user experience going to be like. And will it actually work in this bedroom? Will it work in the, the main and living room? Or will gaming work in the kids' room? And that's what we're trying to provide visibility into is those real world applications. So you can actually have conversations in the customer's language. Just tell me where Netflix is gonna work. Tell me where gaming is gonna work. That sort of conversation, and that's what the tool that we provide is a heat map showing you where those applications will work. And then on the back end, sorry, go ahead. No, I was just going to ask you, so does the consumer have access to this information for self-install or is it to monitor their own uh, Wi-Fi network at home kind of thing for the more tech savvy person or how does that work? That's a good question, Clive. So right now we've designed it more of a technician-led install um, mm -hmm. where they come out with a device um, and then actually stress that home environment, make sure mm -hmm. they get it right the first time. Yeah. As we progress you know, down the road with the solution, we are looking at expanding that into a more of a customer-facing uh, thing. Currently, we do actually have the data. We'll actually, the technician will turn around and show the iPad or the the, the, the device they're using, show it to the customer and show the heat map showing, look, this bedroom is not gonna support Netflix. Would you like me to fix that? So we really did, um, we really did focus on, on a customer facing tool, but not from a, a holy or a holistic viewpoint. It's more of a right. technician led right now, but as we migrate, you know, get more and more demand into North EMEA, certainly we see that migration to support. Mm. Yeah. So here's the interesting thing, right? Because whenever there's a problem like this, and it is a problem in a lot of households, right? Whenever there's a problem like this, there's obviously also an opportunity, a, a real business opportunity. So yeah. what you're also, I think in part, 
proposing as as the the value, part of the value of what you guys provide, of course, is there's an upsell opportunity for carriers to demonstrate that, for example, if you do not with this tool, you can clearly show people uh, if you do not have coverage in the living room, hey, there's something we can do about it. You got to get this extra service or this extra product or whatever additional. Thing. I mean, that is a real opportunity, and there is. Tremendous value in that, I should think. Yeah, exactly, Klaus Peter. So that's twofold, right? One is to solve the, you know, the troubleshooting issues, make sure you get everything working. But m more importantly, the, te the service providers are paying a whole lot more attention to the upside, which is, would you like me to fix that problem? Would you like me to get Netflix to work in every room of the house? You know, would you like me to get gaming to make sure it works in those kids? There is a charge for that. I'll need to put in a mesh networking instead of a single AP. But at least the technician has the visibility to know what he needs to do and also show the customer why you need to do it on a heat map. Oh, right. Yeah, so there's a, re there's a there's real value as well in actually having this verified, right? Because uh, the mesh networks that are out there, uh, and many of them just coming out now, are the consumer mesh networks. They're, you know, they, they will probably work pretty well, but you're not going to independently, unless you're really a Wi-Fi nerd, be able to verify the service in all corners of the house, right? So there's an additional value in that to have this. Uh, this exactly, uh, exactly. And it's more about stress in the network. You know, if you do it, you do your test at 10 in the morning, but when the kids come home from school, everyone's home from work, all devices are connected. That whole home Wi-Fi experience completely changes. So that's one of the, the neat things of our tools. We'll stress that network to really give you that experience, uh, sort of a worst case, you are going to get this work and sort of future proof there. Yeah. So how do you see the future of in-home? I mean, the in-home Wi-Fi that is. I mean, I guess we're not, the number of devices are increasing. We expect more data. Why gig will be coming out, uh, has already come out actually, the certification program and the few products. There's, there's a lot of potential still for expanding the presence of Wi-Fi in the home. Is that not correct? Yeah, exactly. And uh, that's, a, that's a really good point. And I think your show in, in the Wi-Fi Now show in London two weeks ago really highlighted where the industry is evolving, right? You mentioned Y-Gig, uh, more of an in-room sort of Wi-Fi uh, experience. Uh, so there's lots of good solution, I think, emerging, um, whether it's standalone or embedded into the APs themselves. I think the takeaways from the show really were, for me, are really more around um, sort of early stages of meshing. You know, there's a lot of technology, a lot of vendors coming out with that technology, doing traffic steering, band steering, context awareness, uh, lots of progress on that side of standpoint. Yeah. Um, and then moving on to a true SON solution with self-healing, self-optimization. I do think the SON is a little further down the road um, from an implementation and, and deployment standpoint, uh, from a maturity standpoint. Uh, but these approaches, you know, they really are, I think they're putting a lot of attention on the channel. They really are getting that problem, you know, uh, focusing on that channel side. But really, those solutions are not paying too much attention about the location. They just mm -hmm. ship an AP and say, put it wherever you like. And usually, it's hidden behind a bookcase. Yeah. yeah. It's a mesh, that sort of thing. Which really is maximizing the best of a bad situation, rather than actually optimizing the house based on the location of the home. So I think, you know, the future of in-home Wi-Fi really is evolving around holistic viewpoint, not just from a from an installation standpoint, but all the way through to an assurance, a 24-7 self-healing, self-optimization. Um, yeah. And also cloud enablement, that's a big part of it as well, yeah. right? So all of our solutions, including Greenly, you know, where you can actually enable features real time, get big data analytics from all that data. You can imagine how much data is gathered uh, from inside the home and then collated back in the, in the service providers. Uh, no. no, I think I absolutely agree with you. I think it, it's uh, it's a busy time and an exciting time for all the companies like yourselves that are working on the in, in the in-home Wi-Fi space. There's a lot of things going on, a lot of new technology coming out. Not revolutionary technology, but things are being put. Most of it isn't, at least, but things are being put together uh, for the home in a different way, in a new way, right? Uh, and and I think that's really exciting. So it's great to have you. Uh, uh, on the show, uh, Jason, and also thanks for joining us in London, of course. So, and come back and see us soon, all right? Will do. Thanks very much, Klaus. Thanks for the You're invite. Welcome. You're welcome. Thank you so much. All right, folks, that's it for today's show. On our next show, I will be speaking uh, to a company that's connected the unconnected with Wi-Fi in the Australian outback. Can you believe that? One of the most remote regions of the world. So don't miss that. That's going to be coming up on the next show. Thanks to Jason Lee. Uh, sorry, Jason Byrne from uh, Greenlee Communications. And see you next time for another episode. And thanks for watching.